Congratulations. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Are we getting our rosaries back today? Yeah, we're getting this. Don't get me in there. Oh, why not? Why not? <laughs>
Christ for the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With the Spirit. And good morning. Good morning. A beautiful morning. I couldn't invent a morning like this. <laughs> for a beautiful ceremony, a beautiful sacrament that these children will be receiving today. The very life of Jesus into their lives. So indeed it is a day to remember, a day to celebrate, and a day to hold on to for the rest of our lives because as we are in union with Christ in the sacrament, we pray for the day when we will be in union with Christ forever. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the word of truth we long to hear. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the bread of life for which we hunger. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are our strength and our hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us the memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Ghost. 
Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus welcomed the people. He spoke to them about God's kingdom and healed everyone who was sick. Late in the afternoon, the twelve apostles came to Jesus and said, Send the crowd into the villages and farms around here. They need to find a place to stay and something to eat. There is nothing in this place. It is like a desert. Jesus answered, You give them something to eat. But they replied, We have only five small loaves of bread and two fish. If we are going to feed all these people, we will have to go and buy food. There were about 5,000 men in the crowd. Jesus said to his disciples, Have the people sit in groups of 50. They did this, and all the people sat down. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up toward heaven and blessed the food. Then he broke the bread and fish and handed them to his disciples to give to the people. Everyone ate all they wanted. What was left over filled twelve baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated.
What did Jesus ask us to do more than anything else? The first letter is L. <laughs> Love. Right. He asked us, everything he said has something to do with love. He's, and he even put it all together once when he said, love one another as I have loved you. And we know that Jesus loves us very much, right? Where was, where, when, was, when did Jesus show his greatest love for us? When was the time when Jesus showed how great his love was for us? When he died, when we looked at the cross, we see him. He gave up his life for us. There is no greater love than that. So, you know, he says, give your lives over to other people to help them. Not necessarily on a cross, hopefully it won't come to that, but we need to sacrifice for others, to show our love for others. And one thing Jesus did from the cross that surprised a lot of people, um, and I think you might know what it is, but I'll say it anyway, Jesus forgave from the cross those who nailed him to the cross. You think that took a lot of strength on the part of Jesus? You, you know, you had, it showed how strong his love was that he even forgave the ones who nailed him to the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. So he showed us the highest love. But he also asked us and told us to love in the same way. Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another in the same way I have loved you. And that's why we have the cross in front of us all the time, to remind us that he loved us that much. And we need to try to sacrifice for others as close as we can to what we see Jesus on the, when we see Jesus on the cross. Now, we said that food will make it strong to work and play and study. Now, we need to be strong to love, right? Uh, we need to be strong to be patient with other people. We need to be strong to be generous with other people to show our love. We need to be strong to forgive other people like Jesus forgave from the cross. What food do you think will make us strong to love if it makes us strong in other ways? Communion, you got it. <laughs> um, right, there is no food that's going to make us strong to love, right? A banana isn't going to make us strong to love, right? A Big Mac isn't going to make us strong to love, right? I wish it did, but <laughs> I've been a very loving person. <laughs> I try to be anyway, but it's not because of that. <laughs> But yes, there is no food on earth that will make us strong to love. And Jesus, of course, knew that. And so he says, okay, I never, Jesus never asked us to do what he won't help us to do. So he said, okay, I'll be that food for you. I'll be the food that makes you strong to love the way I'm calling you and asking you to love. So that's what we are receiving today. You're receiving his very life as the bread of life. You're receiving his life as food to make you strong to love as he asks all of us to love. Isn't that beautiful? It makes a lot of sense too, doesn't it? That Jesus made himself food to make us strong to love because again, there is no food on earth that would do otherwise. So he made, it, made, us, made himself that food for us. And again, that's what you're receiving today in, uh, in it's your first holy communion. The hosts that are going to be brought forward to the altar are made into the body of Christ on the altar when I say the words of consecration over them. And when you see that it's no longer, it looks like bread, but what it really is has changed into his life, his body. So, again, you are receiving the very life of Christ into your life today. Now, do we only eat once a year? Um, if, we, if we only ate once a year, we wouldn't be very strong at all, right? Uh, no, we eat on a regular basis, three times, hopefully three, three meals a day. Uh, 
And so we need to receive the life of Jesus as our bread of life, our food for loving, on a regular basis too. And when we do, when do we do that? When we go to Mass, when we receive it, because it, we only receive this life at Mass. And again, you know, so we need to go every week so that we can be constantly fed. If we, you know, like with food, we become weaker if we don't eat food. Uh, if we don't receive Jesus as our bread of life on a regular basis, then we become weaker in our faith. And we be, don't become as strong as we need to be to love one another. And so again, it's very important to receive Jesus on a regular basis. This day is important, not just because it's your first communion, which is a very joyful time, but it's the first of a lifetime of receiving Jesus in communion. I made my communion in 1961, May 7th. I remember the days, so it meant a lot to me, obviously. Does anybody know how many years ago that was? We could have met. Okay, how many years? I received it, made my first communion in 1961. Not, not 49, you're getting close. 1961 is 2013 now. How many times, how many years have I been receiving the life of Jesus? 62, you may, actually I'm, I'm going to turn 60 in June, so you may be 10 years older than I am, but thank you, well, not that old. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Okay, and you would add, okay, 52, 52, right. That's a lot of time. So you, you know, if I, so I went to church every weekend, every, you know, on Sundays. So there's 52 Sundays plus holy days, so that's like 60, uh, 60 times at least a year. Plus, obviously, I, I say mass every day. So I won't even ask you to do the math. I wouldn't know it myself. But I received the life of Jesus thousands of times in those 52 years, and. I know that um, when I received the life of Jesus, he strengthened me and called me to be who I am today, and he called me to be a priest. And maybe he'll call some of you to be a priest or sisters or helping the church in, in any way. And again, so, you know, uh, when the more of the life of Jesus we take into our lives, the more he works with us. And, calls us to where we need to be in life, where our talents are best used. So again, uh, make sure that, you know, you, uh, when you receive the life of Jesus, you spend some time talking to him. You'll never be closer to Jesus than when you receive him at Mass, okay? Because he's right there. He just took his life into your life. And so that's a very important time to, you know, after you receive communion, to talk to Jesus. He's certainly talked to him at other times too, but that's a very close time to be with Jesus, because you've received his very life into your heart and into your life. So uh, again, it's an important day because it's your first communion, the first of a lifetime. So allow Jesus to make you strong, strong to love, strong to love as he calls us to love, strong to love as he loves us. Thank you. 
we have this day of our first communion, each further communion may bring an increase of joy and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, who have died and repaired and gave us the gift of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, help us through the Eucharist to live more like Jesus. Help us bring Christ to others by our love and our example. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the kids of bread and wine will be brought forward. Please be seated. Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> the 
The Lord be with you. Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Lord, the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. to be 
be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Please be seated. Brianna Geloso.
we like to take pictures, you can take pictures now.